Hi hey everybody. Okay, I want to show everybody what we've done in the horse barn uh, this past week. Um, Justin helped me one morning and we got a few things done. Come on in. We ended up getting a wall here to keep the horses away from the grain room if they were to ever get loose. We have a, just a very simple lift arm here. It's good hard maple so they're not going to break that. And I say not. Never say never with animals. And uh, that'll go in place and that keeps it from coming out. Um, this door would be shut also, the all the more difficult it would be to get into the grain room. And even if they did get into the grain room, everything is covered up. So hopefully we're okay there. This wall, eventually I'll probably board all the way to the ceiling. And then of course the ceiling will be all insulated and we will do the, the boarding on the ceiling just like we are doing out there in the main barn. But I want to show you what we did this week. We put some mangers in. So um, if you remember we just had it, the horse is just tied to the wall before, but now with these mangers um, this should work quite good. It's, it's fairly high which is good. There's still plenty of rope here. A horse can lay you down and I will at some point I'm going to Set the camera out here so that we can see them laying down because I come in a lot of times they're laying down I just don't think to take my phone out and tape them but um so here I am a little bit early one morning trying to catch them laying down and sure enough Earl's laying down I think Duke was laying down also I think he just got up he definitely will land down at guys. some point you can tell how dirty he is Content as can be. Okay, Earl, time to get out. Huh. Feeding time. Come on. Come on, get up. Come on, guy. Come on. Come on. Come on, get up. Come here, get up. Come on, boys. Yeah, I'll get you some feed. But with these high mangers, this is, should work really good because they're not too apt to get their feet over the top. But because they're high mangers, I put a floor in it. So come up here close. So I have a, a floor in here so that they don't have to reach all the way to the floor to get their, their hay. So they've got plenty of hay here. I have a soft block right here sitting between them. This may, I may change this down the road, but for right now they have salt at all times. Um, I will, I probably will change it because I'll probably put a, make this solid here and then make a, a grain box right here. So I have a grain box here and maybe a grain box here. I'm not sure exactly how I will do it. Um, one more thing I do want to get done here in the next few weeks is I want to put a, a partition between them. I'm not going to go all the way back. I'll probably just come to this point here. And uh, so this would be a partition so they can't turn completely around and, and uh, they'll just stay cleaner that way. Um, and also with that partition, I will start teaching them to back up because they'll have to back out of their stalls. Now I just swing them out when I go take them out for water which is all right right at this stage in their training, but um, very soon I need to teach them to back. So they'll be, because of the petition, they'll pretty well have to back up. There's enough room to turn, but I will, I will teach them to back up so they can back up and go out for water or go out to the barnyard or, or whatever we're doing with them that particular day. So anyways, that's it for that. And we'll continue on what we're doing. Okay, today we're gonna to talk a little bit about worming colts and Horses in general, um, as you saw in an earlier video, I had taken some samples of their manure so that I could send it down to the vet and get the analysis on that so we know what to feed I and mean, what to use for worming medicine. But until we get that information back, um, there's not much we can do. But uh, I have I have to have a general idea on what these colts weigh. I know what my big horses weigh because I've weighed them plenty of times. But for 
Um, these colts, I need to know what they weigh so that we can worm them according to their weights. So um, that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to attempt to put them on the scales and see if to get their to get their um, weights. Um, it could be a little difficult to do because it's another scary thing for the cults to do. Um, so I'm not sure if it's even going to work, but we're going to attempt it. So we'll go do that now, and uh, then we'll come back, and uh, when we get the analysis from the manure, I will explain what's, what's going on with that, and uh, we might even get it today. So the horses are still a little bit dirty. They haven't been brushed that much. A lot of people would think you've got to get right on to brushing them, and it's true, the more they brush, the better. But it's that time of year when they're going to start really shedding, and all this hair is just going to come right off, and their summer coat will be there. And so I'm not worried about too much. There's other things I need to do, and it's actually more important to lead them around and, and work on that training than it is to do the brushing. So anyways, let's go get these horses weighed up. Okay, I have all my good help right now, and we're going to we're going to attempt to weigh these guys up with their warming issues. It'd be nice to have their weights to know how much warmer to give them. I could guess fairly accurately, I guess, but it'd be better if we knew what their real weight was. And we have scales right here, so if they happen to be going, I'm not going to fight with them to get on because it's a little bit tight corners. It's it's all new. So if they don't go on, I'm just not going to fight with them today. But if I could get them on, that'd be great. So Trudy is has Earl, and uh, <laughs> I've got Duke here, and Brenda's going to run the scales, and Abby's doing the taping for all this stuff. What so you, what do you guess they weigh? Well, I guess set at 500. Okay. So we'll go from there. So go ahead and open the door and head on over there. And it's uh, it's very dark. It's, It's quite dark by the scales, so I don't know how well the camera will work, but we'll try it. Okay, let's go see what we can do. So, three. Uh, well, let me see. about it, dude. Judy, come right over here with Earl. Come right up here. Good right there. Okay. There you go. Big boy. Okay. Oh, sorry, 740, but still good. Hey, big boy. No, he's less. So I was very pleased how Duke walked onto the scales. So now we're going to try Earl, and uh, that did not go so well. I almost regret even trying to get him on. Um, it took a long time to, to, to make this happen. Um, this is a scary place for Colts to go. It's I have the scales up tight to the wall for to make sort of a chute and so that when they walk on they stay on. But it's just a tight area to get into. The scales are kind of noisy when they step on it. The uh, 
stamped on a few times to kind of get the feel of, feel of things. And, uh, but eventually he, we did get him on, but uh, I'm glad we did also because at some point he's got to learn how to walk in these scales. A lot of times when you go to horse poles, the weighing up is pretty stressful for horses. The more comfortable they're with it, the better off they are. And, uh, but Earl was, was quite scared. He was actually trembling a little bit when he stepped on those scales. But he did really good. The next few days I'm going to practice putting him on these scales so that he gets used to them so that he's not scared of them. So we'll have to show you that you also. Did it. Good job guys. Okay, Good let's, job Earl. Let's put the barn for right now. Okay. So here we are a couple days later. He's been doing so good today and he seems to have mastered these scales so I decided while things are going good I better take advantage of it and try one more thing. So this is the first time we've gone into the, the old cow barn where my lumber is and it's there again another scary spot, dark, and uh, he walked right in. Duke is over 700. Yeah. And, and Earl is about 600. At least. But are you pleased? Yeah, very pleased. Good. So here we are a couple of days later. Good morning everybody. Petra, my neighbor and my vet, is going to come down this morning and explain to us all what worms my horses have and how I should treat them. So um, she should be here any minute and uh, we'll have a conversation with her and then I will get these animals wormed. You gotta be careful because these help the girls to are quite addicting, so uh, <laughs> don't get too attacked. Because... <laughs> so, anyway, let me introduce you. So this is Beecher, this is my neighbor, and she's also the bat. Um, so she's here to explain about the worms. She gave me this full paper about what they all had, which I can hardly read, but she's that's why I asked her to come today because she's going to explain this out to us and explain what I've done and what I've done wrong. Um, years ago, and correct me if I'm wrong, but years ago, didn't the vet actually tell us that we should be worrying our horses every other month yeah. for a while there? And so that's what I was doing and I was using a lot of Ivermec. Yep. And so because of that, my horses, well, once you take over and tell, tell them what happened because of that. So um, when we, so there's been a lot more um, parasite resistance um, re in the last couple of years so partly because we were using um, we were over deworming and not strategically deworming and a lot of people using the same worming medicine over and over so what happens is we kill off the susceptible worms but then some of those worms get resistant and those are the guys that proliferate so then you end up with this group of worms that are no longer susceptible or get killed by the ivermectin so 
by you overusing, I mean, te technically it is an antibiotic that kills parasites, right? So right. by overusing at a specific antibiotic like that over and over, we're, we're building up resistance. Right. So what we're trying to do now is be much more strategic about our deworming and um, actually it's very good to periodically test so what i recommend doing is uh, spring and fall fecal testing and then um, treating according to what we find on the fecals and then um, we will i would like us to recheck that manure in um, sorry i have to say two weeks from when we finish treatment mostly because they're so high still yes so i didn't do it i didn't do this last fall i did it last spring and actually that's the first time i've ever done this and i'm going to try to continue doing this because it, it's really seemed to be helping yeah so what i think what we should do then is there is a fecal um Sorry, I can't think of what it's, it's the fecal reduction count uh, system. And um, actually Cornell gives you a uh, discount, like 80% discount on doing that. Like, so they want you to retest really? the feces so that we can monitor okay. the resistance. Yeah. So, and then what there's, you know, then we can look at what the percentage reduction is from your counts okay. and then that way we know depending on which one of the dewormers we used if it's like down 95 percent we know it did its job right, right. so that's what we want to do is continue to do that and make sure we're not getting resistance um so that's why i would really encourage you to keep doing okay. that every you know and i think we could but for now i just need to do it in a couple of weeks correct and then again in the fall yeah okay. that's what i think okay. i mean we could do a spot check in the summer okay. and make sure we're not coming up okay. on the worm counts again okay. um or the egg counts i should say and then um <laughs> and then yeah, i told you they're very <laughs> yeah so if uh, so yeah i i think it would help us just because we had such a high load um Maybe we should double check it in the summer and just make sure that we're not starting to shed high numbers again. And then that way we'll keep maybe the load a little bit lower in the pasture too. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, do it that way for now, just because we had such a high load. Right. And to make that clear, it wasn't on these two because these are the colts I just bought. The, the, what she's talking about mostly is, is actually my four horses that I've had right along. These two being colts and that I just bought, do they are high in worms but i think what is this it said generally colts do tend to be higher on worms <laughs> so generally colts are, are little guys yeah. um yeah. are more susceptible to the small intestinal worm called ascarids and uh so yeah we want to strategically deworm for ascarids in these guys and that's the small intestinal worm can lead to uh, impactions. Right. So that's why we, we worry about that. Right, right. So we're using, on these guys, the fen Fendazole or Panicure, so that um, that actually paralyzes the worms and we won't kill them all at one time, which if you have a high load of these worms, right. if you kill them all at once, that can definitely cause issues. Which so, it turn into colic. Yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. Which is, is uh, with a lot of cults. Years ago when I raised cults, I had issues with colic at times with these foals. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of reason was because I wasn't doing a good job in worming and doing the testing. And, and so um, that's, that's good. I'm doing it now. But, uh, but so we'll just have to see how that goes. So, um, okay. Uh, that's really what I wanted you to share with everybody because you know so much more about it than I do and I, I can hardly even say the names of this stuff. <laughs> so um, that's great. Now when I'm worming them, I'll wor you don't have to stick around for that. You're a busy woman. But, um, so when I worm them, uh, of course I've done this plenty, but just I'm just going to run through what I do and just make sure I'm doing it right. So when I do, I would make sure they don't have their mouth full of hay. So by doing that, I'll actually stick my hand into the side of their mouth and pull out what hay is there. Yep. Um, I mean, I feel comfortable doing that, done it for years, but is there something we should be telling people not to, where to put them at, you know, even? 
I think just I should most people just not do it. Just make sure they don't have. I think make sure their yeah mouth is empty, and then I think. I mean, you can wait and not stick your hand in there so you don't right. get bit, but and just hold their mouth if off and let them finish. Yeah. yeah, and then just you'll stick your tube in the side in the yeah. side of the cheek, kind of next and I'll to the teeth. Explain that when I do do it, but it is one yep. to make sure I get. I'm doing it right because yeah. sometimes you do things forever and ever, and and you don't even realize you're doing it wrong. So. No, I think that it's it's pretty. It's not rocket scientist. It's not rocket scientist. Yeah. yeah. So these tubes are just a simple tube like that, and you got a. a Thing here you just scroll it down to wherever weight that you want to use and so um, now okay another question I have I like I generally overdo it a little bit on the warming because a lot of times they will spit out some yes yeah. is, is that safe to do and how much should we overdo it I mean don't go crazy but it is safe there is like a safety parameter like factored in there in and a 17 1800 pound horse a ton is perfectly fine that's fine yeah. um, we try, you know, I mean, we try to be as accurate as we can, but not everyone has scales like right. you do. So I think, you know, a lot of times we just have to kind of guesstimate the weights. So, I mean, it's the toxicity on that is like you could give triple the dose and it wouldn't hurt them. Okay. But obviously we don't want to do that. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, it's very safe. So now we talked about this a few minutes before the camera was wrong. So these two, because they're foals, we should actually give more anyway. So this is a tube for a thousand pounds. For a mature horse, yeah. So he weighs 700, a little over 700. This guy's a little over 600. So that should I just do the full thousand pounds on both of them? Is that a safe and good thing to do? Um, and then recap? So I think you could probably get away with that. Um, from a cost standpoint, you probably don't want to, right? Like you could probably, I was thinking- and this um, whole whole scheme of things this is pretty darn cheap yeah it is so i mean if it's easier for you um you could but i still like to try to be as accurate with the dosage okay. as you can so so i think like i go three, 750 right you because could it's do, a 750 yep, mark exactly right to that and, yep that's what i would do okay so you would do three quarters of the tube yep. right yep. and then yeah okay. yep very good is there anything else we're missing? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. But I just, yeah, let's retest them in okay. two weeks yeah. from when we're done the treatment and then see okay. where we're at. Well, we'll be done the treatment today and I've already written it down. So that, yeah, that's what we do. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming up. I very much appreciate it. No problem. And you can't take these two home. I know you're <laughs> thinking about it, but you can't. Well, they're right down the road. I got so. the girls that would bite it. I'm happy. <laughs> okay, so I have it all set here. And I'm just going to stick my fingers inside of his mouth real quick, make sure there's nothing in his mouth. It's pretty well empty. And then what I'm going to do, I don't know if you can see this, I'm just going to shove it into his mouth and through the side like this. And real quick, give it a sh push the plunger in. In the process, I also hold the heads up. And I, I'm not in a big yank to get this plunger out because in the process, he's, he's spilling a lot of it. And I hold his head up. What I'll do is I'll give them a little bit of water after I'm done here too, so that they can wash it down, of course. I see a lot of hay there, so I'm just gonna stick my finger in the corner inside of his mouth. Nothing really there. And stick this inside of his mouth like this. Give it a quick plunge. Hold his head up, twist this a little bit as they come out, if you can see that. Kind of hold his head up a little bit. Then I'll give him a little bit of water so they can wash it down. But they were good. So we'll go out into the main barn and I'll show you how I do bucks. Okay, buck. So I'm going to just stick my hand in his mouth like this. He's going to let me, huh? Okay, he's clean. So then I'm just going to, I'm going to release, unhitch him. Sometimes if they fight much, it's just as easy to have that off. Plus, because it's not there, he's allowed to put his head really high, which is actually what I want. So I stick that in there, give it a good push, twist it around a little bit as I pull it out. Hopefully he'll keep his head high and not spill any. 
That's one tube. These are a thousand pound tubes, so I'm gonna put two full tubes, which is which is the two thousand pounds. But uh, he doesn't weigh that, of course. But he weighs eighteen fifty probably. So as you can see, he did spill a little bit, which probably brings the dosage just about perfect. So there you have it. That's all done. So there's a little information on worming that I hope you enjoyed. I was sure glad that my vet came to help explain things. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.